that I do is around um, sexual assault awareness and um, uh, counseling of survivors of sexual assault. And we have a sort of a rule around sexual assault. And the rule is you just don't ever get to tell people who are recovering from sexual assault how they have to react. You don't have to tell, you do not get to tell them they have to forgive, that they'd be better people if they forgive. I mean, you know, you, it's just the rule is that particularly if you are the aggressor, you do not get to make rules or make judgments on those against whom you have aggressed. That's just the rule for the discourse. So if we're going to have reconciliation, which we often try to do, because especially in cases of incest and in cases of intraracial rape, there's, uh, what we have found is that survivors and victims often don't want to go to the police. They don't want to go um, in a criminal route. They want to have some period of reconciliation. But the rule is the aggressor never gets to make rules for how the aggrieved um, expresses themselves. I, by the way, think the same rules apply in a collective sense. As far as I'm concerned, rich people don't get to tell poor people how they should act. White people don't get to tell black people whether or not they get to be offended by certain comments. And men don't get to tell women whether or not any particular joke is said. I mean, that's just sort of the deal. So if black people say, stop calling us refugees after New Orleans, it makes us feel like we're not citizens. You don't get to trot out four black people on the Republican side who say, no, actually, it's fine to call them refugees. No, no, the people of New Orleans said, stop it. So you have to stop it. So that's my general rule.